Private sector, I can assure you, sir, is as much corrupt as public sector. It's not uh, something. And uh, recently, you might have read in the paper about uh, the uh, recruitment issues uh, pertaining to the TCS. It became a major thing, and uh, it's well known that uh, many of these uh, private companies are as much corrupt. So you can be very happy to note that it's not uh, uh, only uh, government related. It is. Uh, the other point is most important across the country from Kotem to Kohima. In the earlier days, they used to say Kanya community Kashmir. That is not very well appreciated nowadays. So it's Kotem to Kohima or Ahmedabad to Agastala. Everywhere you will find the corruption is dominant. So it's a sort of across states, it unites our country. This is something which we have to uh, uh, you know, remember and which we have to. So it's not something only, only this state is corrupt, that state, no. All states are equally corrupt. And one important thing you know, I have studied is more or less the rates are uh, regular rates. It's more or less, you know, it's not uh, per square feet in Bangalore, they demand uh, 75 rupees, for instance. The same thing is in Rajasthan, the same thing is in... So the commonality is there. The other point is, it's the most secular activity in the country. It is the most secular activity is corruption and generation of black people. Hindus are corrupt, Muslims are corrupt, Christians are corrupt, Parsis are corrupt, all are corrupt. And across caste, Yadavs, Purmis, Gaudas, Dinka, uh, no, Brahmin, everybody is. So you can be very, you know, positively somebody asks you, the you know, most secular activity in the country is this uh, corruption. The third thing is, many a time we read in the newspaper, people are, you know, to become a sweeper in a municipal uh, department, some PhDs are applying another, some uh, 9,000 uh, 9, people are applying for five jobs. And it's not that they all want to serve the nation or anything like that. It's a very government job. You can make uh, anywhere five to six times more than the amount of salary which you get. This is not something top secret I am letting out or anything. So that uh, enthusiasm is there. Enthusiasm is <laughs> the extra punch collector. I will give you two, three examples. Because in 70s, I, I came out of uh, college in 60s uh, in uh, the then uh, what is called the Madras actually. And uh, this was the uh, when I was in school, I should mention this, I used to read in the newspaper called the Mundra Scandal. Some of you may not even know about it. There was a businessman called Mundra. There was a finance minister called Titi Kishwachari. He has to resign from the finance minister post because he was recommending to LIC to give loan to Mundra. This is what he did. And the person who exposed it is the son-in-law of Jawaharlal uh, Nehru. Gandhi, and uh, it became a big issue. The amount involved was something like 75,000. <laughs> Today, if I tell this, people will laugh at you. Because uh, nobody talks in terms of thousands. Right? Recently, one uh, PWD engineer was raided by the authorities and they found 5 lakhs in his house, cash. And all other engineers wanted to go on strike. I asked why. What is this, sir? What is our status? What is our position? Why left only there? We are very, very upset. So we would not uh, like to be. At least, you know, one or two crores should be. So the oh, over time period, huge amount of changes have taken place. I, in undergraduation, I got 500 rupees per annum. That used to be what is called merit cum means in those days. Bombastically told, that was given. So, 1500 rupees for three years. I studied in Madras and then I went to Calcutta, then I became a doctorate and teacher and other things. There is a clause in that uh, 10 years if you work as a teacher, you don't have to repay. So, I somehow thought that clause is there. And uh, after six years of service, I got a note from the government of Tavna telling that unless you repay the amount, everything of yours will be confiscated. Your car, your house, your land, your you know, dog, everything. So we confiscated. I was very worried. 
I rushed from Kavita to the office of this thing. They told, no sir, you have to return. I told, I will return, what is that? And you tell me that, you know, they computed the interest rate at those days at 6 percent. Tell me the exact amount. Then the most interesting part of it was, the person concerned told, come tomorrow. <coughs> then I went again tomorrow. There was another lady who told, sir, you have to give him some, give him something or tea coffee or something. There was no board telling that uh, Sarkar Kalisa is uh, Devar Kalisa. That is there everywhere. That Sarkar Kalisa is Devar Kalisa means government work is God's work and you can't get God's work then without Dakshana. Fundamental. So it is encouraged. I told I want to return the money, why should I give him the money? He told, no sir, when you enter this office, you should be very clear. You can't go out of it without paying something. This provided a huge shock for me. Of course, I have to give him some tea coffee. And then I, to return the fund which is provided, you know, you are not asking for any, you are returning the money. But you have to, Pay the bill. So this made me think and uh, I began to look at the various uh, you know, literature and other things. There was a committee in 2008, if I remember correctly, 2007 or 8, Lal Kishan Adwani, then opposition leader, he constituted uh, myself, Ajit Dhawan, then uh, Jetpalani, Guru Murthy, all were members of the committee to study on this whole issue of black money in tax service. That is where, you know, we I contributed, you may call it, or I generated whatever interest it could be. Then uh, there was a big story, then there was a big movement, everybody jumped into that. Baba Ramdev also jumped into that. <laughs> I should share with you an interesting thing, side story. Uh, once uh, Ramdev asked me, you are talking, uh, you know, that time estimated uh, amount outside was 1.5 trillion US dollar. This is what uh, I did estimate. He told all that is fine, sir. Per head, how much it will come? I told 5 to 10 lakh. In those days, it was 60 rupees per dollar, actually. I am talking about 2008. And uh, population was also lesser. Something 5 to 10 lakh. He added 5 plus 10 as 15. And then uh, he went around in all his severe telling 15 lakh rupees is available to every individual in the country. This is what is, uh, he never told uh, you each one will get 15 lakh because today some people are carrying back, you know, along with them always <laughs> thinking they are going to get that. Uh, <laughs> that uh, where is Modi's promise? And Modi never promised. The fact of the matter was this 15 was arrived at by numerator by denomination. <laughs> so this is the uh, type of, uh, and then it became, uh, many of you will remember, Anna Azare fostered another thing and uh, our friend uh, Kedri Wali became chief minister of Delhi. This, uh, and then uh, Supreme Court uh, in between, uh, Ram Jitmanadi went and filed a affidavit telling that a huge amount of black money is abroad and all. And that he kept me as the exhibit number one. <laughs> he told this is the professor who is telling it. I told Ram, don't do all these things because India is a complicated country. The accused will become the victim, victim will become the victim. I may be asked for telling that there is black money in the So move my name. Don't do any of these things. Another thing is any of court case mean I, I believe in the rebirth theory. So court to mean it will take uh, its own uh, any of then court ordered that uh, SIT should be formed and then uh, SIT was formed immediately and then they began to give one, uh, what you call the envelope to the court. I, if I remember correctly, 18, 20 envelopes have been given. I don't know whether they are blank envelopes or whether they get any, <laughs> said any names or anything. So this is the introductory thing. And of course, how much is the amount is, uh, you know, Basically, people many a time ask me, including one or two from the ministry, what exactly is the amount of black money? You so know, the fundamental principle is it is black money. You cannot uh, tell exactly how much is the amount of money. But my computation that time, 
around 2005-06 when I did a survey in Bangalore, I found 50 to 75 crore per day is the uh, amount of corruption money generated in Bangalore alone. I am talking about 2005. Now it can be major areas were land registration, uh, police department and transport. These were the three major. So 50 to 75 crore that time itself. And uh, what happened was one of my colleagues' uh, father passed away those days. He was a very elderly person. So we went to the crematorium and all the the olden days uh, they used to say come tomorrow for collecting the ash but this is modern time you know they do what you call three minute noodle type of thing so immediately it will be so we wait for an hour sir you will get your ash the board suggested 400 rupees we have to pay for the entire activity as per government regulation of that time and uh, I was a, we were asked to some 2,500, then finally after negotiation it was 2,000. <laughs> so we have given 2,000 rupees. And uh, the concerned people were not in a mood to argue another thing. After all you have lost your father and you want to get away with it. And after that I was sitting there because one hour we have to wait, you know. We had our coffee and other. I was having a talk with her. There was a lady officer in charge. I was talking with her. You are collecting 2,000. Per day how many? She told around 10 bodies come. So that means 20,000. And Saturday, Sunday also people die. I can assure you. <laughs> Not that you know, we can traffic all the other. So, total, you know, 20,000 into 36 lakhs and 72 lakh per annum. I am reasonably good at mathematics. You are the, the calculator and other. So, 32 lakhs, you are earning per annum, I asked. By then, I know, we have become sort of friendly. She told, what is this sir you are telling? This 72 lakh, I am not earning. It goes up to the ministry. <laughs> so, I get only 4 to 5 lakh. That's my share. 4 to 5 lakh mean in 3-4 uh, years, you have to get 20 lakh. Yes sir, but to get this post, I have to pay 12 lakh. I am talking about 2006 7. <coughs> to get this post, I have to pay. Then I did a whatever you call it survey or study and found out almost all the posts are sold in all the states. You cannot get a good posting. For instance, a cop wants to have a posting in city market area or a cop wants to have a posting in Yamajar <coughs> area, everywhere. Good location posting you have to pay with the understanding that three years at least I will not be shifted from you. So to get a government job you have to pay. To get a good posting also you have to pay. That is the type of a and all this in obviously in cash. There is no other um, way in which uh, this can be dealt with. So my estimate is roughly 10% of the national income is in the form of black money in the country. Every year. This is a this is not a uh, what you call once and for all. This is additional flow. 10% means 250 lakh crore is roughly our uh, GDP last year. That means 25 lakh crore was the impact. This we have to recognize. And this is not only last year. Every year around 10 percent. Some Marxist thinkers say it is 40 percent, 50 percent and I think those are very high level of exaggeration. Definitely minimum, I am telling conservative estimate is 10 percent. And what happened to this? This is not something which is kept in the Godrej Almera as shown in the films. It is circulated in the credit market. Most of these Telawalas vendors, what you call the unorganized sector, they all get uh, working capital by this amount. This money is kept in the you know, non-bank finance companies and uh, by and so when the big uh, you know, like Winnie Week, some of you may remember about in uh, 
India also given the digital uh, revolution and the level of digital activity, this can be done. Because large areas you find, uh, for instance, in the, during election time, you find uh, <coughs> many of the, uh, you know, EC official confiscate only in the form of cash. And in order to reduce that demonetization was introduced, but that helped only in that particular period, that particular time. So, simple suggestion is, you can't hold more than <coughs> in cash. And if you want to, for any particular purposes or something, you have to get the permission. Very simple. You apply to bank, will verify through with RBI, and then they will allow you to hold 10 lakh or 15 lakh or something, because you may say that I have got a huge amount of construction. I want to yeah, distribute a weekly salary to them. Now, even the digital revolution, even that is not required. You find uh, you know very petty traders even accepting GPay and uh, Paytm. You know, one can definitely say that the revolution is the way in which transactions are taken. So this is one suggestion which should be taken. And uh, no need to prove that it is beyond your... That is what. Second is slightly draconian, but uh, I would anyhow uh, advocate it. <laughs> Take an Excel sheet, list down all the employees of various municipal corporations in the country and gone back for the last 20 years. All from the top to the lowest. And freeze all their assets. Bangalore, Hyderabad, Chennai, Calcutta, Bombay, all this major from 2023. And if you do that, our economy will become half a trillion more. You don't have to worry about you know, when we will become 4 to 5 trillion, when we will stop. That is one. Second is another Excel thing you take. Same way, find out from the land registrars all over the country. From uh, Kashmir to, sorry, uh, Potem to Solima. All the land registrar office, whoever was working for the last 20 years, you collect their name, address and uh, particular, freeze their assets. Again, our GDP will go up by another half a trillion. So half plus half one trillion. So our GDP will have reached five trillion. <laughs> <laughs> Who is going to do it will be the major person. The first one, holding of cash beyond the five is uh, five lakh or whatever amount you estimate. That's not very difficult to implement in the current situation and the current market. As far as international black money is concerned, it's much more complicated. There are something like 70, 71 tax events in the world. Actually, A for Antigua, B for Bermuda, it goes on. The list is very long. And uh, some of them are zero tax, some of them are minimum tax. Most of them don't ask any questions. You can have a lawyer and a chartered accountant as your friend people. And so the actual beneficiary may not be known to anyone. So this is the, that can be estimated, uh, the, our funds will be roughly 1.5 trillion to 2 trillion US dollar. That was 60 rupees that can be captured. So now it may be 3 trillion or something, easily. And uh, how it is generated, one is uh, percentage commission, everybody knows. <coughs> whether it is a defense contract or whether it is a purchase of land and equipment, you tell the seller that 5% you deposit in my account in such and such a bank abroad. So that is, uh, in those days, of course, in 60s and 70s, we had a 95% marginal rate of taxation. That means at the margin, for 100 rupees, you have to pay 95 rupees as taxes. So people are not very enthusiastic. But now the taxes are relatively come down, something like 30, 35 percent. So that cannot be the reason. The another way in which this is done is called trade mispricing between uh, uh, exporter and importer. That's the most common method actually. You export some products for something like under dollar, 
you tell the buyer, I am, this is hundred dollar, but you don't have to pay me hundred dollar, you pay me only eighty dollar. Twenty dollar you pay to my account in such and such a tax. Very simple. And similarly, when you import, you tell the seller, you bill me for something like hundred and ten dollar. The goods are worth only hundred dollar. But the remaining ten dollar you know, you are expected. So this is how the money get accumulated. And this is called trade mispricing. And that's a jargon used actually. It's a illicit funds which are generated. This is a very common method all over. All the countries of the world, different, different ways they have dealt with it. Very simply, in 2008, Germany has got a country called Liechtenstein. Next to Germany, Liechtenstein may be like half of the size of Bangalore, but very popular place for keeping the black money. So Germans used to get into Liechtenstein and to keep their money in the bank and come back. This was going on from the 50s, 60s. <coughs> but around 2000, the economic situation was not very good and uh, people were asked to tighten their belt and other things. A lot of people began to question this. Why the rich are allowed to keep money in their time? So German foreign profit, they hired thieves and uh, sent to Leichenstein in the night and they went and broke the banks, the lockers and other things and collected all the data and came back to Germany. Leichenstein was shouting, you know, we will go to you and you have... Germany is a big gorilla, you know, you do whatever you want. You stole our money, we stole your data, that's all. And then this was leaked to the press. Then they published it. It had uh, this uh, Boris Becker and first uh, the uh, Gimor, he was the chief of the German uh, Deutsche Post, uh, like India Post, like that all this. Around 800 or so names they could not identify as Germany. So the foreign minister announced, along with the finance minister, that uh, anybody who wants, we will give you these uh, names free. So everybody, England, uh, Australia, so many countries sent, uh, this was 2008. <coughs> India didn't send anybody. India is the only country which didn't send anybody. But, uh, maybe they thought that uh, nobody will be there in the name, or they thought that why, you know, anyway. So, as a professor, I could not keep quiet. You know, professors don't keep quiet. You know that. So I wrote a letter. Why we are not? Then it became a big issue in Parliament. Then uh, Indian government also sent some people, but uh, clearly indicating don't collect any of these data. That was a very interesting thing actually. So this is the other thing, other method would be what uh, US did with uh, Credit Suisse, with uh, Switzerland. US actually arrested two senior, number two and number three of Credit Suisse in US. They arrested and put them inside jail. Actually. They told that you have been you know, uh, accumulating huge amount of money from US citizens for your, uh, and it's not a, legitimate activity. Then uh, you give us the name of US uh, Department of Justice asked for some 50,000 names. Mm, Credit Suisse has uh, <coughs> never faced such problem. So Jatland has never faced such problem. 300 years they are doing this business. So why suddenly <coughs> somebody is asking us data? Then uh, finally it was settled that they will there will be fined 800 million US dollars. They pay the fine. And then US ask for names. What is this? We have paid the fine. Why are you? No, no, you paid the fine for your Mr. Banner, but we want the names. Now, in Switzerland, there is a peculiar law. It's not governed by the Bankers <coughs> Regulation Act like in India. It is in their constitution that anyone who is depositing money in Switzerland, his name cannot be talked about or discussed. Very simple. If you go to Zurich airport and sit there for two hours, you will find almost all the who is who of India walking around. 
you know, the film actors, the cricket players, the musicians, all of you. It's not as something top secret or something. <coughs> but none of their names can be talked about by a Swiss banker. He can immediately be either removed from service as well as arrested. That's the so Switzerland we have to amend our constitution. And they are doing it only for US, not for other countries and other things. That is another method. The third method is what was attempted by uh, countries like Philippines, Peru, Nigeria, and other things. They have collected the Philippines uh, Marcos money, something like 100, 100 billion dollars at least, they got out some 1 billion. Similarly, Peru money, uh, this uh, Nigeria, Sunny Abacha dictator, he has put in 2 billion or something in Switzerland, but they put uh, So they went around. Uh, making noises and creating. That is another method. The last method could be the UN suggested in the sense that there is a regulatory law by which India can pass a regulation telling any money kept abroad belongs to the government and uh, appoint a receiver and tell very clearly that uh, all other holding will be nullified. It's not recognized by India. So we can we may not be able to. The fundamental problem is we are focusing more on the human beings rather than on the money. We want Chokshi back, we want uh, Nero Modi back, we want Malaya back. Why should we want to? <laughs> they can be there. So they will come here and convert the jail into resort. They will put them. What we want is the money. To the best of my knowledge, sir, no tax earned as uh, extra data any one person in the history of this tax. Nobody is free. And there is no extradition treaty between us. No, uh, no anti war, they told this. I told nobody will be coming. We are just wasting our. What we require is the funds. Why should Malaya come to Bangalore? You tell me one good reason. We can be in the, uh, London happy. But let all the funds be. Problem. That should be our focus. And uh, aggregate, my estimate is something like 3 trillion is available abroad. Not just funds, it's, uh, we also have huge amount of diamonds, gold, chains, uh, you know, all these things stored abroad in the banks. Not now, from the 40s and 50s. From a very long time, people have been accumulating in abroad, thinking that, you know, it's much safer to put money there. But today, situation is slightly different. Indian returns are attractive. It's much better than many of the international return. So, I think we, the time has come for us to call the uh, spade a spade, or call it spade a shovel, whatever it is, and then try to curtail domestic as well as global funds. The global funds would be enormously beneficial to us in terms of huge amount of infrastructure and other products. It is very, very important. We are talking about uh, uh, 50 to 60 trillion US dollars is required for our infrastructure. So, good amount of funds are available, our own money. And uh, last but not least is, Supreme Court has very clearly told this uh, money in uh, international thing is a three cent. This is the word used by the Supreme Court. Domestic black money is no confidence of the government. International black money, which Indian keep, is no confidence on the country itself. So, this is a difference between the two. This is a treasonable activity. And a treasonable activity cannot be condoned for a long period of time. Doesn't matter which government uh, comes to power or something. Most importantly, we should uh, make all efforts to get because it is our money, the money of ordinary people, money of the Panipuri sellers and the money of the people who sell sopu and uh, all these things which hmm? has been kept abroad. It's not uh, so. It's a uh, you know blood and sweat of these people. So this time we take steps, we put pressure, and make this as a number one agenda for the next 
trying to tell me. We are a, you know, we are a reasonably big country now. We are recognized as one of the. So it's not very, it's not a time of the 50s and 60s where we have to go and uh, you know, beg them, you know, give this. Uh, we have enough data. We have enough uh, type of. Uh, missionary to deal with this, I think uh, sooner we do this, better for us. Not just for a country, as a, I would say as a civilization. We are answerable to the next generation. So they would ask, what were you doing? And we have faith. Let's be very clear about it. We have really faith. It's time for us to recognize this before the younger generation spit on our face. So we should then, you know, take all steps, all efforts, aggressively in order to get the global black money and also do the domestic reduction. What is the advantage? Very simply, advantage is reduction. Property in public life will be established, if you ask me. It's very, very important that as a nation, we should be able to tell proudly, you know, for instance, in the I have travelled to almost all over the world. Everywhere German will say, oh, we German won't do it. I have never come across anywhere in India anybody telling, oh, we Indians won't do it. No, we will do it. <laughs> <laughs> we will do it more. We will do it uh, openly, we will do it stealthy. So the sense, sense of property in public life and the self-pride should come along with this. That is, according to me, is the greatest civilization pressure which we should get. It's not just the money part of it. That uh, it's something more than that I am uh, looking at. I think we should uh, be very clear about it. And uh, so I thank once again uh, Padma, Nagadesh Murthy and Nagadesh. Uh, I think they all require a very good uh, big hand.